Okay, so good day everyone. My name is Annie Aguilaura. I'm a first year nursing student of Davao Doctors College Dental Program and I am from BSN 111H Group 30. Now today, I will be assessing the abdomen of the client. Okay, so first, uh, before that, I'll be reviewing the client's medical record if available and also check for the doctor's order. Just for me to ensure that I am delivering the right procedure towards the right client. Okay, next, I will be determining the scope of the assessment and also prepare for the unnecessary um, treatment. Now, for the um, the flow of our assessment or our sequence of the assessment, um, we will be following the IPP, uh, IAPP sequence. Okay, we are not following the IPPA since we don't want to um, palpate or percuss the abdomen first. Okay, we must first um, auscultate the, um, the abdomen because we don't want to alter um, the vowel sounds. Okay, if we do the percussion of the or the palpation first before we do the auscultation. So we will um, first do the inspection and then auscultation and then percussion and then palpation. Okay, so for the needed equipment, um, I will be needing my stethoscope because we will be auscultating for bowel sounds. Okay, I have here my skin marker. Okay, for the, for example, the assessment of the abdominal girth. Okay, we will be measuring that. Okay, and then we need a marker. Okay, and then we have here uh, my um, my tape measure because we will be measuring the um, scale for, for example, the assessment of the abdominal girth. And assessing for the span of the liver because we will be also um, measuring that one. Okay, so um, after that we will be do uh, we will be doing our hand washing so we to deter any spread of infectious microorganism and also done my gloves if necessary. So now that I have washed my hands, okay, I now I am now ensured that my hands are clean. Okay, also the purpose of why we did um, assemble or secure all the needed equipment is for us to um, preserve time and also energy. Now, um, I will now be starting, okay? So first, I will be um, meeting the client and also introduce myself. Okay, so, hi sir, my name is Annie Angel Laura. I'm a student nurse for today. Okay, so you are um, you are um, subject for the abdominal assessment. Okay, so may I please verify your um, the identity, okay? So with the use of two identifiers, the name and also the birthday. Okay, so sir, can you please have your wristband, sir? Okay, so can you please tell me your full name, sir? Harvey de Laura, how about your birthday? June 1, 2000. Okay. Now that I have um, a verified, I would like to ask the client how would they like me to uh, how would they like me to call them after the assessment? Okay, so sir, uh, may I ask how would you like me to call you today? Okay, so Mr. Harvey. Okay, now I will be explaining the procedure towards the client. Okay, so this is from the established report and also to um to gain cooperation. Okay, so sir, um, hi, my name is Sunny Ethan Laura. Okay, so um, today you are subject for an abdominal assessment. Okay, so for the abdominal assessment, okay, um, the majority of the positions, okay, um, you are in the bed, okay, you are in the supine position. Okay, so there are also assessments wherein I ask you to sit down, okay. So I also would like you to sit down, okay, if I tell you to sit down. Okay, so also I will be exposing your abdominal area, is that okay? Okay, so also I will be touching your um, certain parts of your body, specifically your abdomen, is that okay? But um, rest assured, I will be providing um, an examination gown for the client to wear all throughout the assessment. Okay, sir, so, uh, if you do have any questions or clarifications, you can ask it away, okay? Okay, so um, now I'll be ensuring um, privacy, okay, by the means of closing the door if the patient is in the private room and sliding the curtains if the patient is in the ward. Okay, so sir, is it okay for me to close the door? Okay. Okay, um, also I'll um, notify the client the purpose of the documentation. Okay, so sir, um, the purpose of uh, me documenting the findings here in the CHA form is because um, this is for record keeping and I will be forwarding this to your um, attending physician. Rest assured that um, this information that I will be putting here will be just between you, me, and also the decision that I will be referring you to. Okay, so do you have any questions? Okay, now I'll be positioning the client. Uh, okay, so um, I have positioned the client. Okay, all, um, he's already in bed. Okay, and also I'll ensure that the client is comfortable with the room. 
Okay, so sir, uh, may I ask, um, do you feel comfortable with the room? Is it too hot or is it too cold so that I can adjust the ther uh, thermostat for you? So you're comfortable. Okay, now that I have ensured, I'll ask the patient to um, to avoid, okay, if needed. Okay, this is for me to ensure still um, the cli uh, client's bladder, okay, that um, it, um, he is comfortable. Okay, so sir, um, have you already urinated now? Okay, so now we will be starting the assessment first by the surveying of the abdomen of the patient. Okay, so first I'll ensure, okay, that the client is in the fine position. Okay, and then I will be covering the lower, the upper and lower extremities of the patient. And also, only expose the certain body part, okay, the abdomen. Okay, only expose the abdomen, which we will be examining. Okay, so sir, um, as if that I am covering the lower body of the patient and also covering the chest of the patient. Now, I'll be exposing the um, abdomen. Let's just say, you know, I have already given the patient an examination down and I am currently exposing the abdomen of the patient. Now, um, I will be um, observing the abdomen of the patient, okay, for noting for any strea, for any vascularities, okay, such as um, superficial veins or dilated veins that is present in the abdomen of the patient and also not for any um, rashes, lesions, abrasions, and such. Okay? Okay, so um, I haven't seen any. Oh. Now, I will be um, inspecting or assessing the umbilicus of the patient. I will be noting for its contour, for the color, and so forth. Any presence of bulges, passes, or lesions, or rashes, and such. Okay? Let me see your umbilicus first. Okay, so I have, I am, I have, I um, seen that your umbilicus is in normal. Now I will be um, inspecting the abdomen of the patient. So first, um, I'll see okay for the um, the orientation of the uh, abdomen of the patient if it is flat, rounded, or scaphoid. Okay, so for scaphoid, this is normally seen in patients that are usually thin. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so how do I position myself? Um, I will be um, watching, okay, um, in a um, higher level in compared to the level of the abdomen of the patient. Okay. I have seen that the patient's abdomen is flat, okay. Now, um, I will be assessing for the abdominal girth, okay. Um, with regards to the pelvic bone, okay, or the pelvic area and also the um, lower um, rib cages. For any rounding, I haven't seen any bulging, okay, and also abdominal enlargement. Okay, now um, I will be measuring for the abdominal girth. Okay, so I'll be using my um, my measuring tape. Okay, still so I'll ensure the client is in supine position, and then I will be placing my um, I'll be placing my measuring tape below the um, patient. Okay, so let's start with the umbilicus. Okay, I'm putting it here. Okay, after that, um, we have um, we have now um, ensured for the correct uh, measurement. Now we will be using my skin marker, and then we will mark the uh, location. And then I'll ask the patient not to remove it until it is it uh, it isn't now um, necessary. Oh, I'll be. Um, checking for the symmetry of the abdomen of the client. Okay, so first, supine position. Also, I would like to add, okay, um, whenever we do the assessment in supine position, always remember or to note that it is important for us to put or elevate the head, okay, or put any object such as below, um, below the head of the client if the client is on top neck, okay? Meaning, um, those are patients who find it difficult to breathe every time they are laying down, okay? Um, that's for um, an, another info, okay? Now that I have measured the abdominal girth, I'll be um, inspecting or assessing for the, um, the symmetry of the abdomen of the patient. Okay, so um, we will be uh, noting for any diastasis or diastasis recti and also um, herniation, okay? Whenever the client um, elev or raises his head, okay, we will be noting it down, um, um, noting it with the presence of any herniation or bulging. Okay, so I'll ask the patient to raise his head and also to observe for the abdomen, uh, for the abdomen of the patient. 
Okay, so sir, can you please um, raise your head when I tell you to? Okay? So can you please raise your head? Okay, again, raise your head. Okay, so I haven't seen any bulging or herniation whenever the client raises his head. Okay, now I will be checking for any abdominal breathing. Okay, when it comes uh, abdominal movements whenever the patient is breathing. Okay, so I've seen that the abdomen of the patient is moving whenever um, the patient is breathing. Okay, so this is a normal finding because this is very common to uh, male clients. Okay, so um, I'll also be assessing or looking for any peristaltic waves in the abdomen of the patient. But I'm sure we will be auscultating for the abdomen. Okay, so for that, we will be using ma uh, the stethoscope. Okay, so first the vowel sounds, okay? Now for the vowel sounds, um, we will be auscultating for each quadrant, okay? We have four quadrants, the right, the right, and the left, upper, and lower quadrants, okay? Now first, we must ensure that our um, uh, the diaphragm of the stethoscope is warm, okay? This is for us to ensure that the, uh, the patient is uh, comfortable, okay? So for the vowel sound, we will be using our diaphragm. Okay, so in each quadrant, okay, the sequence here that in each quadrant, we will be monitoring for our auscultating for at least one minute in each quadrant or um, five minutes in all totality, all four quadrants, five minutes. Okay, so we will be starting at the right lower quadrant, okay, the lower quadrant uh, since um, um, vowel sounds are frequent here or fre uh, very frequent in this size. Okay, so I'll be wearing my um, I will be wearing my stethoscope and we will be using my bed, making sure that it is warm. So let's start with the right lower quadrant. So I'll be placing my diaphragm here, at the right lower quadrant, and then we will also be in each quadrant. Okay, in each quadrant one minute. Uh, I will also be here and then the left lower quadrant, and then left upper quadrant. And then uh, the left upper, uh, right upper quadrant. Okay, now that I have auscultated for the vowel sound, okay, um, it's important for us to know the frequency, um, the pitch, okay, and also the characteristic of the sound that we have elicited for the vowel sound. Now, uh, we will be auscultating for the vascular sounds, okay? So we are trying to um, monitor for any brewy, okay? This is our low pitch murmur like sounds. Uh, that could be um, an abnormal finding whenever we auscultate for the pulses or the arteries in the abdominal uh, the abdomen. Okay, so for that, I'll be using my bell since it is a low pitch. Okay, sounds. And then, um, so, uh, we will not be auscultating for the quadrants. We will be auscultating for the specific um, areas of the pulses. Um, oh, oh, yeah, for the pulses or the sounds of the pulses. So we will be auscultating for the abdominal aorta and then for the renal arteries and then the iliac arteries and the femoral um, arteries. So let's start with the abdominal aorta. So still we are using our uh, we are still using the bell okay, since it is a more pitch sound. Okay, so I'll be placing it here in the abdominal aorta. The renal. Uh, for the area. And then the femoral cuts. Okay, so sir, can uh, 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 lower the your uh. Okay, so still, I'll be using my bell. Now that we are done with the vascular sound, now let's proceed for auscultating for the venulosum. Okay, still, uh, venulosum are low pitch. Okay, and also they can be observed um, in the epigastric region and the umbilical region. Okay, so still I'll be using my bell since it is a low pitch sound. Low pitch area, uh, it is a low pitch sound, the venue sound, so I'll be using my bell. So first in the um, epigastric. Okay, so first um, locate for the um, locate for the cycloid process and then um, below the cycloid process or the external body, we found the uh, find the epigastric area. Okay, after that, um, for the umbilical area, which is um, just below the uh, epigastric area. Okay. Now, I'll be auscultating for the flexion drop over the, um, the liver and also the spleen. Okay, so for the um, for the liver, it is located at the right, still um, at the lower rib cage, and also goes the same with the spleen 
which is in the left, um, in the left lower right page. Ghost, um, I'll be switching from bell to diaphragm since it is a high pitched sound. Okay, so first the um, liver, the right lower right page. And then for the skin, at the left lower right page. Now we will be percussing for the, um, the abdomen, specifically for the tone. Okay, so um, for that, we will be exposed still. The patient is in supine position. We expose the abdomen and then uh, we will be um, lightly and systematically palpate for all the four quadrants. Okay, um, still in this systematic technique and using our hand techniques. Okay, so still we start with um, the right upper quadrant and then we do um, the systematic sequence. Okay, so let's start with the um, right upper quadrant. Okay, so sir, excuse me. Okay, so let's start here. Okay, so uh, we note for any timpani or dullness. Okay, so for timpani, um, this is usually percussed for those um, um, locations or spots that are air filled. Okay, now for, uh, for the dullness, it is either um, location of um, any fluid or solid organs, or there is presence of fluid or um, a solid organs on the spot. Okay, so let's start with the right upper uh, quadrant. Excuse me. And then we end at the um, right lower quadrant. Okay, so now that we have percussed for the tone of the abdomen, now we will be percussing for the span of the liver. Okay, so we will be determining the descent, the upper, and also the lower border. Okay, so let's um, begin uh, percussing. Mm -hmm. Percuss for the lower border. Okay, so still um, at the midclavicular line, at the right lower quadrant. Okay, so we first percuss here, um, down to up for the upper border. From uh, We note for timpani to dullness. Okay, let's per start percussing. Then we will be marking it with our skin marker. So that's for the lower border. Now um, we will be percussing for the upper border, still at the midclavicular line. Okay, um, we locate for the clavicles, and then um, um, we will be um, percussing for the upper border. So we start from the upper, um, the upper chest, upper right chest, and then we will be percussing from the upper right chest down. Okay, still noting for the lung resonance towards the um, the dullness. Okay, so let's start here. Okay, so now that I have noted for dullness, I will be um, marking it with my skin marker. Okay, so um, after that, we um, we will do the same for the descent, and then we will be measuring it with either um, the use of our measuring tape or our centimeter ruler. So for this um, one, I will be using my measuring um, my centimeter ruler since it is um, easier for me to uh, measure. Okay, so. Okay, so now that we are done with percussing for the spine of the liver, now we will be percussing for the spleen, for um, still assessing for the enlargement of the spleen or splenomegaly. Okay, still um, at the right side, we will be starting at the right side, and then we will be percussing. Okay, so now we will be um, percussing for the spleen, okay? So I guess, uh, we will be starting at the right side, no, kasi the spleen is located here. Okay, so is it? Uh, I guess it is easier for me to um, have the client position to a sideline position. Okay, so can you please like that, okay? So, um, still at the right side, um, we start, um, we note for the mid axillary line since we will be percussing it here in the location. So, this is the mid axillary line, and then this is the anterior, uh, the anterior axillary line and the posterior axillary line. So, we'll be determining both the upper and lower border, and also we will be percussing for the, um, the sides, okay? Still for the enlargement of the spleen. Okay, so first, uh, for the mid axillary line, we'll be percussing starting here, okay, at the superior part down to the um, still noting for long resonance towards the um, the splenic dullness. Okay, so let's start for cussing. Okay, with my skin marker, I will be marking it there. 
Okay, um, for the lower border. And then for the sides, okay? So here, um, this is for determining the um, enlargement of the spleen, okay? So I'll ask the patient to um, to uh, take a deep breath, okay? In order for us to elicit an accurate findings. This is a sir, can you please... Um, um, can you please take a deep breath? Um, for the deep breath, okay, we'll be percussing still starting from the anterior axillary line towards the uh, mid-axillary line still, um, noting for tympani to splenic dullness. Okay, so sir, can you please uh, take a deep breath? Okay. Okay, so now that we have um, percussed for this spleen, now we will be per blunt, um, for the blunt percussion of the um, liver. Okay, so this is for us to um, elicit, okay, or known for any liver tenderness, okay? So for that, um, we will be having the uh, kind in uh, supine position back. Okay, and then uh, we will be locating still at the mid-clavicular line, okay? So we know for the clavicles, okay? And, okay, so for, um, from the upper right chest, we will be, uh, we'll start percussing there until the um, lower rib cage, still at the anterior surface, okay? So, um, how do we percuss it? So, I'll be placing my left hand, okay, still at the upper right chest. And then, um, the ulnar side of my other hand, I will be um, getting my left hand. And then, I'll ask the client if it hurts, okay, every time I percuss the um, spots. Okay, so I'll start with the upper right chest. Does it, uh, does it hurt, sir? No? Okay. How about this? No? So now, I'll be percussing for the kidneys of the client. Okay, so this is for us to assess the tenderness of the kidneys. Okay, so for the position of the client, I'll have the um, client on a sitting position. So, sir, can you please sit down? Okay, and then um, the back of the client should be uh, facing towards me. And then I'll let the examination come to the client. Okay, and then for that, um, I'll place my left hand over the, um, the, uh, the lower rib cage. Okay. Um, in the 12 rib cage, and then I'll place my um, left hand there, and then um, using my right hand or the other hand, I'll be percussing it still on the ulnar side of my right hand. I'll be percussing the um, the kidneys, okay? And then um, it is because for we will be noting for um, kidney tenderness, so I'll be asking the client if it hurts, okay, upon the percussion. Okay, so I'll start. Okay, sir, does it hurt? No. How about that? No. Okay, so I'll be doing it again on the other side. 12 rib cage at the lower ribs. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? We will be having uh, the test for uh, the fluid accumulation or the situs um, for the abdominal distension, okay, and also for the um, for the flanks of the abdomen and also the bulging. Okay, so for that, still in supine position. Okay, so we will be percussing from still at the um, abdomen, okay, um, from the um, the bed, okay, the head, uh, from the bed towards the umbilicus, okay, so we note for um, dullness to tympani. And then if we uh, percuss for the tympani, then we will be marking it with our skin marker. Now for, um, again, for the other one, we will have the client on the sideline position, okay. From that sideline position, we will be percussing from the umbilicus or from the abdomen, starting from the abdomen towards the bed, okay. Still, uh, we will be noting from tympani to dullness, okay, so... Um, um, I expose the abdomen of the client first, and then from the head, uh, from the head, uh, from the bed towards the umbilicus of the client. Okay, so, so I'll start per uh, percussing. Okay, and then I'll have the client on a side sideline position. Okay, so so. Okay, uh, I'll start from the abdomen, okay, from the umbilicus towards the bed. <laughs> we'll be performing the fluid wave test of the abdomen. Okay, so, so the client, um, the position of the client is in supine position. Okay, and then I'll be exposing the um, abdomen of the client. Okay, so first I'll have the client's um, fingers or hand. Okay, at the midline and firmly um, have it in the midline of the abdomen. Okay, so with the use of my palmar surface, okay, I will be placing it at the abdomen of, um, at the side of the abdomen or the flanks. Okay, also I'll have my other hand still using my palmar surface at the opposite abdominal wall and then um, 
with few um, taps, okay? I'll note for any um, fluid wave or fluid movement of the abdomen. Okay, so now, um, we will be palpating for the abdomen of the client. Okay, so first, um, it's important for us to note, okay, that um, we will still be standing at the right side. Still, um, the client is in supine position and we will be covering the upper and lower extremities, okay, and only exposing the uh, part of the abdomen that we will be examining. So, that as if that I have um, covered the lower extremities and upper extremities, such as the chest, okay, um, next I will be exposing the um, abdomen. Okay, so still we are in the right side, okay, so we will be um, systematically, okay, uh, perform palpation, okay, it's either a light and also deep palpation. Okay, so light palpation, we will be noting for any tenderness, for any nodules, for any bumps, okay, for any swelling and such. Okay, so um, if there are any tenderness, okay, we will be doing the bimanual palpation, okay. So for the bimanual palpation, we will be using both of our hands. Okay, and also um, for um, palpating for any deep organs, okay, we will be um, palpating for an approximate 5 to 6 centimeters deep palpation, okay, for any organs, okay, and for um, the for assessing for tenderness and such, we will just be doing the light palpation, which is approximate um, 1 to 2 centimeters deep, okay, so we will be palpating all for, or, uh, all for quadrants, okay, or um, the use of 9 regions. So, I'll just use the four quadrants okay, since it is easier for me to palpate. So, I'll start with the right lower quadrant and then I'll go systematically. So, I'll just have the camera um, zoom in. Okay, so now that I have um, zoomed in my camera, okay, so let's start with the palpation. Then, we'll be starting at um, the area wherein there isn't um, elicited or noted for any tenderness, okay? So, if we have um, noted for any tenderness, okay, in a specific area, so we will not be starting there for the palpation, okay? So, um, for this, we'll be um, systematically palpating all four quadrants. Okay, let, um, let's just say, let's start with the right lower quadrant. Okay, so for the light palpation, um, we'll be palpating for at least um, a depth of one centimeter. Okay, and for the deep organs, okay, we'll be palpating for at least or an approximate um, depth of five to six centimeters. Okay, so if there are any tenderness noted, we will be doing our bimanual technique or palpation wherein we will be using two of our hands. Okay, so I'll start. Okay, so do you feel any pain, sir? No? How about here? No? Okay. So still, we will be noting for any bulging, mass, or nodules in the client's abdomen. Okay, so for the bimanual technique, um, let's just say I have detected for any tenderness. So I'll uh, palpate bimanually with the use of my two hands. Okay, so for the deep organs, you will be uh, palpating for an approximate depth of 5 to 6 centimeters. Still, you will be noting for any masses, um, tenderness, and such. Okay, so do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, we will be palpating for the umbilicus. Okay, so, um, and also its surrounding area. Okay, so we will be noting for any swelling, for still for only uh, nodules, masses, and such. Okay, so do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, now for the aorta, so I'll be uh, I'll be palpating with the use of my thumb, okay, and also my first finger. Stay, um, still, we will be deeply palpating for the aorta, okay. Still, we will be um, noting for any pulses, okay, or uh, any pulsations. Okay, so I haven't uh, palpated for any pulsations in the aorta of the client. Okay, for the liver, okay, still clients in supine position, and we are in the right side. So I'll be placing my left hand. Um, I'll be placing my left hand under the um, 12th or in the position of the 12th or um, 11th or 12th rib. Okay, so I have now placed my left hand. Now, um, my right hand will be put here, okay, and parallel or in the um, in the edge of the right coastal margin of the abdomen. Okay, still, um, the my fingers are pointing towards the um, head of the client. Okay, so with, uh, with every palpation of the liver, I'll ask the client to inhale and exhale deeply in order for me to palpate, okay? So for me to deeply palpate for the liver. Okay, so sir, can you please inhale, exhale, okay? Inhale, exhale. Okay, so um, with an inward and outward um, pull. Again, sir, inhale, exhale. Okay, so I haven't palpated for the liver. So next, we'll be palpating uh, palpating by the means of hooking. So I'll use two, uh, both of my hands. And we will be um, positioning here, okay? Still, I position myself from, um, facing the client's um, lower limbs, and I'll um, put my uh, put both of my hands 
and hook it at the right um, coast or the um, edge of the right coastal margin. Okay, so still I'll ask for the client to um, deeply inhale and exhale in order for me to deeply palpate the structure. Okay, still we will be noting for any um, tenderness, okay, nodules and such. Okay, sir, can you please um, exhale and inhale deeply? Inhale, exhale. Okay, again, inhale, exhale. Okay, so now we will be palpating for um, the task for polycystitis. Okay, so um, here at the um, right edge of the lower coastal margin, we'll be deeply palpating. Still, we will be noting for any tenderness or um, consistency. Okay, so sir, do you feel any pain? No? Okay, so if there are any pain, okay, so that is um, a positive mur Murphy sign. Okay, next, we'll be palpating for the spleen, which is at, um, the, um, at the left. Okay, um, we'll be palpating at the left edge of the right, uh, left coastal margin. Okay, so still, we'll be noting for any tenderness. Okay, so um, do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, so this is a test for um, splenomegaly or the enlargement of the spleen. Now, we will be palpating for the kidney. Okay, so I am sit down. Okay, so I'll have my um, left hand placed below or under, um, under the client's, um, okay, at, and then um, I'll have my um, hand parallel, still parallel to the um, left hand that I have placed um, below. Okay, um, I'll be palpating or gasping for the kidney. Still, um, I'll ask the client to um, um, inhale and exhale deeply. Okay, so sir, can you please inhale and exhale? Okay, so also I'll be doing it on the other side. So that I, have, I am done with the per uh, palpation, now I'll um, perform the uh, other additional test. So first, I'll have the hypersensitivity test, so I'll use my um, a sharp, any sharp object. So I'll use my um, cotton um, Q-tips and I'll bring it down, okay, so for me to have this um, sharp edge. Okay, so I'll be um, guiding it at the abdomen of the client and still note for any um, reactions of pain. Do you, uh, do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, so I'm done with that. Um, also, I can um, use uh, both of my hands or both of my fingers while uh, pinching for a skin fold. I'm still noting for any reactions. Okay, next, um, I'll perform the um, so as sign. So I'll ask the, uh, still, the client is in supine position. So I'll ask the client to be in a left side line position. Yes, sir, please uh, Side. Okay, so um, with the client um, laying on the left side, I'll support the um, the right leg of the client and also I pour extend it. Still, um, we will be noting for any reactions okay, of pain. Okay, so do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, so that's for the SOA sign. Now for the obturator, uh, obturator test. Okay, so I'll ask the um, client in a um, spine position. Okay, and then um, I'll extend, okay, um, still supporting the right leg of the client and have it unfold internally and externally. Do you feel any pain, sir? No. Okay, um, after the obturator, um, for assessing for any obturator sign, I will be performing a test for appendicitis. So, I'll palpate um, deeply at the, um, left, uh, at the left lower quadrant. Okay, still, um, I'll note for any um, tenderness, okay, or um, sudden pain with regards to the, um, the client's condition. Okay, so I'll deeply palpate. Okay, so do you feel any pain, sir? No? Okay, so now that we are done with assessment, okay, so sir, you can wear your clothes back. Okay, so sir, um, I'll summarize, okay, what I have, um, um, demonstrated to you. So, sir, I haven't seen any problems, okay, with regards to, uh, to your auscultation, your palpation, your percussion, okay? But, um, you are experiencing pain, di ba? Okay, so you have reported that to me, but um, I'll, I'll forward this um, results to your um, physician in charge, okay? And um, the doctor will um, actually prescribe you um, um, any uh, medication, okay, with regards to easing the pain that you're experiencing with your stomach. Okay, so um, do you have any questions? Okay, so if uh, you do have any questions, you can ask it away. Okay, or you can message it to us. Okay, so um, do you have any concerns? No, no? Do you have any concerns? 
Okay, so um, thank you so much for your participation. Okay, so after that, I'll be um, doing my medical hand washing and then I'll be recording all of the findings that I have gathered into my CHA form. Thank you.